Today we are working on the pillar, the upright pillar for tracking that's going to have the, uh, the tracking wheel on it. So this is going to be an inch and a half. Um, the website that I'm going off of for this said 13 inches, said it might need to be a little bit longer or shorter depending on what spring you use. We're going to try a screen door tensioning spring, see if that works. If not, we'll have to order in a different one. That's all I could really find locally. So this can be our inch and a half pillar. You can see where we have our holes drilled and all that good stuff. We'll get into more detail as we go with that. Here we have our, our tracking arm right here. So our idler pulley is going to attach down in here. This hole is going to be offset so it goes over this. One side of this uh, two by two square tube is going to be, one side of this is going to be hogged out so it fits over that. And of course, we're going to need some spacers, but we'll get into heavier detail on this. Now, I've tried making this a couple times, and I haven't been happy with it so far. I've got maybe two hours worth of footage that isn't even going to make the cut, so we're going to redo it from scratch and explain as we go. So stay tuned. I'll see you on the other side of it. So the post we're working on right now, the pillar, is going to go right in here. We're going to cut it at 13 inches. I have a... what did I do with it? So I have a spring door tension spring, and we're going to see how this works for us. Um, it looks like it wants a 30, a, a 30 pound spring, and I think we might be able to get it out of this. Now whether it's going to be, whether this thing's going to be, whether we're going to make this taller or shorter, I'm not sure yet, but if worse comes to worse, I'll probably just make a spacer, set it down in there if we have to make it shorter, or longer, excuse me, and we'll just go from there. So. We're going to cut this piece 13 inches long. We'll get our holes and everything drilled in. I have to uh, weld some shims on it. We're definitely going to need those, so let's see what develops here. Now I'm going to cut this with the porta band just because it's easier. On the smaller stock, I can't see the line on that, uh, that circular saw, so we're going to cut it with this. Our next piece is going to be our tracking wheel bracket. So what we're looking for, we want, oh, let's see, so we want three and a half inches to the long point. It's kind of a bitch to measure this stuff on a curved surface, but we'll do the best we can. I'm sure if it's not exact, I don't think we'll have too much issue. There's always a little play. Okay, so three and a half on one side, and then our short point's going to be at one inch. All right, so now that we have, this is what our tracking wheel is going to hook to. But in order for this to work, 
We need to cut this guy off right here. On both sides, it's going to have to get hogged out of there. A little by eye construction, that's what we do around here. Yeah, that's a little more like it. Alright, so we have this all cut, it's all ground out flat, got the sharp edges taken down. Okay, see that mark right there from the, uh, the grease pen? We have to measure in from this edge right here over an inch and an eighth and down three quarters inch from the top. This gets offset, and we're going to exaggerate this a little bit. This gets offset so that you can turn that in so you can track both ways. So this will get drilled out three quarters down and then centered in there. So we'll be able to get that tracking. And we'll do this on the drill press just so it's a little more accurate.
shut the sawdust burner off a little too quick. I didn't have enough sawdust left, believe it or not. Of course, I put all the piles of sawmill sawdust outside so it's all sopping wet. If I'd uh, known I could burn it all right, I probably would have saved it. But uh, I've cleaned up the whole wood shop, everything running this sawdust stove. But boy, it is nice. It was in the 70s in here last night with that sawdust stove running. Absolutely great. But on a half a load today, you don't get much heat out of half a load. That thing seems to like the full load. So that's why we had the little propane salamander going. So anyway... Here's the pillar assembly for our 2x72 belt grinder. Now, I had to tack 8 inch shims on this because what I was able to pick up locally, that's the tightest fit I could get on that tubing. Um, I'm not very happy with the way that the, uh, the shims look. It looks kind of cheesy and half-assed, but it gives it a nice, it gives it a decent fit. We don't have a bunch of slop and everything else, so this right here, this guy here, is for your tracking, your tracking arm. So once you have the idler pulley attached right here in this half inch hole, this bolt will push all the way through, hit the back of that, the bolt that runs the shaft for your uh, tracking pulley, and that'll move that up and down. Now remember that this guy right here is offset. It's not centered on here, and that's so this thing can tip in a little bit so you can track both ways. Doesn't have to be a lot. I don't, um, not that I've ever built one, but I dealt with, I've dealt with plenty of things that have tracking on it over the years, and it's very minute movements that you need to do to get things to go where you want. So um, we got that. We have a, see if I could fish it out of here. Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. I can. So this right here, this is just a spring off of a, uh, a screen door. It's meant to keep a screen door so it can't spring out too much. So it kind of, that's how that works. I, guess. I can't talk, but um, this seems to be just right. We'll know better once we get this thing all together and we get our belts here and everything. But from, it looks like mostly what I was reading, it wants like 30 inches or 30 pounds of compression for like an inch of movement. So we'll see how this goes. It's, it's not bad though. I think she'll do just, she'll do just fine. But uh, geez, what else we have? What else can I say about this? Welded in a cap on the end, welded in a cap up here. I may attach a knob up here so I can be, make it easier to push it down to change belts. I honestly don't know if it's necessary, uh, but down here you need something that the spring could hit against. And just to keep this spring from flopping inside this two inch tubing, I might put a little, uh, I might put a little tab on that or something to center that spring, but it seems to work all right the way it is. We'll see. Time will tell though. You're not going to know until we have a belt on this thing and all that. Now, we talked about the seams inside the two-inch pipe before having to get them out of there. There's a little bump. I got lucky with this one. That seam actually really works in my favor. The seam on this uh, stretch of 2x2 two two tubing I have is actually way off to the side here. And this is an eighth inch shy all the way around. or eight, no, It's like a sixteenth. All, it's enough all the way around to make it sloppy. So that seam misses it completely. That saved me so much work right there that it's just unbelievable. So anyway, we're going to keep going with the step-by-step -step on this. This is a pretty pretty critical part of the whole deal right here. Uh, next time out, we're going to work on our platen assembly and all that. And I said I have to get on and order everything. I was going to do it the other night and I have not gotten to it yet. So anyway, if you're enjoying this series, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff, the YouTube plugs and all that good shit. And uh, any questions or comments, leave them down below. If any of you have any experience with these, you've built one, let me know. I'd love to know how it works for you and if you've had any issues with it and what I might be looking for to do better as I go. So anyway, I guess we've strung that jumble of words together and I can turn the camera off now. Have a good night, everybody, and I'll see you on the next one.